did the first hominins started walking upright? How long ago did the first bipedal species emerge? I think that the answer to these questions go back a lot further than we all previously thought. And a few days ago, this was most likely confirmed by a new study into an upper leg bone from a Sahelanthropus chadensis species. Sahelanthropus lived around the same time that our ancestral species diverged from the lineage that eventually led to the chips. They lived during a critical time in our evolutionary timeline. And now it seems like it's confirmed that they were able to walk upright on two legs. My name is Kaylee, and we're going to dive into the latest paper released by Nature about bipedalism in Sahelanthropus chadensis around 7 million years ago. That's a long time ago. So first, if you've watched any of my previous videos into like ancient species, you know that we're going to look into the location. So the fossilized remains of Sahelanthropus chadensis were discovered a little over 20 years ago, all the way back in 2001, in the Jurab Desert in the country of Chad, which is located on the African continent. Yeah. I mean, of course it was located in Africa. It's the out of Africa fact by this point. The genus name is Sahelanthropus. This is comprised of two Greek words, Sahel, which refers to the southern part of the Sahara, where the country of Chad is located, and Anthropus, which is the Greek word for man, as I have explained in both my Paranthropus video and my Kenyanthropus video. I explained things in previous videos. Well, won't you look at that? So the species name of Chadensis is based on the country where all the fossils of this species were found, the country of Chad. So when we put together the name of this genus and the species inside the genus, it literally translates to the Sahel man from Chad. So all the way back in 2001, in the country of Chad, the first fossils of this new species were discovered. Although at the time it wasn't known that these fossils belonged to a new species. Usually in the field of paleoanthropology, it takes quite a while for paleoanthropologists to conclude that they have stumbled upon a new species, or in this case, even a new genus. So during the first excavations, the archaeologists discovered a six specimen that they ascribed to this new species. A nearly complete but deformed skull, a jaw fragment, a molar, an incisor, a right jawbone including molars, and a right canine. Later on, it was revealed that there were more specimen that were discovered during the initial excavations and the later on excavations, but these were stored either wrongfully with animal bones or they were just simply originally excluded from the Sahelanthropus genus because it was decided that they couldn't reliably be associated with the skull that was discovered even though they were found near it and Sahelanthropus is the only hominin discovered at the site in that area. So it's not like you can ascribe those fossils to any other species because they simply weren't there in that layer. <laughs> so yeah, they were Sahelanthropus. These later added specimen were a femur, otherwise known as a leg bone, a right and a left forearm bone. These later added specimen are actually critical when it comes to the latest study that has been published in Nature about the species being able to walk upright. The leg bone was analyzed and it was actually concluded that the leg bone suggests that Sahelanthropus chadensis regularly walked upright, while their forearm bones show that they still spent a lot of time in the trees. So what many people may not know is that bipedalism is usually considered as the major milestone that put our ancestral species on an evolutionary path that differed from the other species that eventually died out or led to the chimps. So now that Sahelanthropus is suggested to be a bipedal species, they actually may play a role in our evolutionary tree. Although there are some scientists that are on the fence about this paper and therefore contest the possibility of bipedalism. I mean, what's a paper without some contest? 
It's not considered to be the smoking gun for the oldest evidence of bipedalism, although it does strongly, strongly suggest Salanthropus to be a bipedal species. The evidence points more to a bipedal species instead of a quadrupedal species. So there are some paleoanthropologists that do recognize some features in the femur that suggest bipedalism and other features in the fossilized remains that, again, suggest that Salanthropus was more hominin than ape-like. Apes don't walk upright. Hominins walked upright, at least partially. Not only the femur suggest bipedalism, but the skull that was discovered in 2001 does suggest this as well. The opening where the spinal cord would have gone through to connect the spine with the brain does point downwards, as it does in us humans, because we walk upright. The quadrupedal apes have this opening pointing backwards in a more horizontal manner, because they do not walk upright like us. Therefore, their spines connect differently to their skulls. So the femur and the forearm bones of Salanthropus were compared to a large, whew, a large sample of living chimpanzees, living gorillas, and living orangutans. But they were also compared to the fossils of Miocene apes who lived during the same time, and early hominin bipeds that have been confirmed without a doubt to have been bipedal species. For instance, Aurorentugenensis and Ardipithecus ramidus, and they were compared to remains of ancient Homo species and Homo sapiens as well. That's a very large sample. During this comparison, the researchers looked at a number of different things, including the external shape, curves, internal structure, and the thickness of the bone. All of this was done to figure out if the femur of Salanthropus has the same characteristics that are key uh, as the bones belonging to species that are known to have femurs suitable for the force and balance and other requirements of upright walking. Did the femur of Sahelanthropus have these key characteristics? And during this comparison, the researchers actually found that there were many similarities with the other hominin species that were bipedal. And there were no traits discovered that were exclusively found in apes either. And therefore, a very, very, very strong case can be made for Salanthropus chadensis being a bipedal species. So the authors of the paper published by Nature actually did everything in their capability to try and analyze if Salanthropus chadensis was a biped or not. And the end result seems like a compelling case that leans to yes. The combination of the skull with the spinal cord attachment opening pointing downwards and the femur should actually lay to rest the debates and the doubts for this species to be considered bipedal. Although yeah, there have been two groups in the past 20 years that have analyzed the femur and they do give two complete different results. They disagree entirely on what the femur tells us and yeah, this is quite strange as they are looking at the exact same single piece of bone. They come up with like vastly different opinions. How? So maybe they can release the data, like the internal and the surface scans, so that other researchers can examine them and be able to enter in this debate. I need more people to look at it so that more people can enter into the debate so that eventually we can figure out if the answer is yes or no. Because I'd like to know. There is, of course, the possibility that Salanthropus was a bipedal species that only walked upright from time to time, while still spending a lot of time in the trees climbing, as the forearms of Salanthropus are still very ape-like and very suitable for climbing. The area in which Salanthropus lived also does play a key role in its evolution and possible bipedalism. This was an area with forests, palm groves, grass-rich areas and wetlands. In modern times, this area is simply a desert. Modern times are not always fun. But you know, seven million years ago, it was a rich landscape where Salanthropus chadensis had many resources at its disposal. 
and the possibility for climbing trees and covering distances walking upright as well. So even after all this research, there are still scientists who contest Salanthropus chadens as being a hominin. This is because Salanthropus lived during the time where the human ancestral line diverged from the apes, from the chimpanzees. It is, of course, as you can imagine, um, very much unclear if Salanthropus chadensis is an ancestor of the chimps, if they were an ancestor of us humans, if they were a common ancestor to both lineages of chimps and humans, or not ancestral to either chimps or humans. There are some paleoanthropologists who believe that bipedalism might have evolved on multiple occasions in different ways, which actually could explain why the femur looks slightly different and doesn't bear some of the characteristics that are attributed to bipedalism. They might have evolved in a different way. So we all do know for a fact, without any reason of a doubt, that Auroran tugenensis was a bipedal species. They lived 6 million years ago. So how strange would it be that Salanthropus chadensis was bipedal as well? As a species, they are only 1 million years older than Auroran tugenensis. They could possibly be the very first species to evolve into a bipedal species. They could have been the oldest in the evolutionary branch that eventually led to us modern humans living today in, you know, modern times with our technology and such. So I was actually already planning on making a video on Sahalanthropus as a species. And if you're still interested in seeing a video like that, be sure to let me know either in the chat during the premiere or in the comments down below. But yeah, with that said, you have reached the Part of the video where I tell you that if you enjoyed watching then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet then click the card in the upper right corner or click one of the links in the description down below or click a video in the end card. I mean the end card is set to best for viewer, YouTube caters to you and what it is that you'd like to see. I would also like to say a massive, massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. I made my first channel member slash Patreon post in like months, <laughs> a few days ago, a week ago, something like that. But yeah, I'm trying to post more on there, especially when I'm in Egypt, I'll try and post more pictures there. You know, some more behind the scenes footage and stuff. Not necessarily like a video footage, but at least like photos and stuff. But yeah, um, thank you so much for supporting me. And if you are thinking or considering about, you know, supporting me, then maybe become a channel member or Patreon. September 13 until October 16, I'll be gone. And I can only upload on Sundays from now on until like the end of October, because I don't have the energy to make 10 videos in the upcoming two weeks before I leave. I have the energy to make seven, maybe, if I'm lucky. There might be a week or two where I don't have an upload. So yeah, please forgive me. Um, but yeah, I'll be gone in Egypt for a month. And uh, yeah, if you want to join me in Egypt, then go to adeptexpeditions.com and search for the Mystery History Tour. See you guys. Bye.